if you already have a QGIS project that you want to use in your field survey, you just install Merging Maps plugin for QGIS and uh, use the packaging system. So the packaging system will package everything to, to the folder. So all your layers are offline, can be used offline. Welcome to another episode of the Mapscaping Podcast. My name is Daniel and this is a podcast for the geospatial community. My guest on the show today is Peter Petrek. He is the COO of a company called Lutra Consulting. And Lutra does a bunch of of really interesting work in the open source geospatial world. They are part of the QGIS core development team. And today on the podcast, we're talking about Virgin Maps, which is open source software that will help you take QGIS offline. Hi, Peter. Welcome to the podcast. You are the COO of something called Lutra Consulting. You guys do a bunch of amazing work with the QGIS project. I know you do like a lot of other things as well. And one of the things I want to talk to you about today is something called Mergent Maps. I think before we get there, could you just introduce yourself to the audience, please? Who are you and and how did you get involved in Geospatial? Hi, thank you for bringing me here. I am Peter Patrick and work on Lutra. I got to look at Geospatial eight years ago a lot of fun to to do this open source and gis together what were you working on before like what industry or what background did you come from before yeah it was automotive industry and we developed numerical solvers for combustion systems it sounds like a long way away from maps like was there any crossover there apart from obviously the the programming skills that you use yeah i'm 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 studied uh, physics and numerical methods so um I worked uh, in GIS on a mesh data, mesh layer in QGIS, where you use these uh, simulations for modeling, um, let's say, floods or meteorological data. So it's, uh, uh, the physics is all the same everywhere. So it's, uh, it depends where you use it. So that's kind of crossover for me. Just one final question before we sort of move on to this, this Merchant Maps thing. What language do you develop in? Mostly C++, Python, and C. That's, that's my preference if I had to choose. Cool. So you guys have developed this thing called Mergent Maps. And if I go to the website, mergentmaps.com, it basically says something along the lines of like taking a QGS offline. Could you tell me what Mergent Maps is? And then I think we'll, we'll sort of break it down to the, the different components and, and walk through those so people have a good understanding by the end of this of what it is and how they can use it. Yes. Uh, Mergent Maps is a way how to collect field data with your mobile or tablet easily and collaboratively with your team and then synchronize it uh, seamlessly to the cloud or your server and uh, then follow to synchronization to QGIS where you can use all the QGIS uh, features to post-process or analyze the project. My understanding is that this starts with a QGIS project. So I'm, could you walk me through an example here? So I work with QGIS what do I do to be able to use this to to do the synchronization offline and have people working like out in the field on these apps and and how do I get the information back to QGIS? But but let's start with a QGIS project. What do I need to do to make this work? So if you already have a QGIS project that you want to use in your field survey, that's the easiest way. Easy solution is that you just install Merging Maps plugin for QGIS and uh, use the packaging system. So the Packaging system will package everything to, to the folder. So all your layers are offline, can be used offline. It also da- does a bunch of validation. So you can be sure that it will work correctly on your mobile phone. Then you just uh, click synchronize button. So it will go to the cloud. And uh, on your mobile phone, you install Merging Maps input again and uh, synchronize back. And you have your QGIS project on your mobile and you can use it you can digitize some data, get some data outside. Okay, that, that was definitely a high-level overview of that. You mentioned so this QGIS plugin called Mergent Maps, I believe. It does a lot of the stuff for me. Can you tell me what does my project have to, are there any requirements before I start using that plugin? I'm thinking about these different layers I might have. So some of them might be online layers. I might have a base map, for example, from OpenStreetMaps or something like that. What do I need to think about before I push publish to the cloud? You can use, because this mobile application is, uses the, really the same rendering engine, the QGIS core library, as your desktop QGIS application, you pretty much doesn't need to do anything because it will render the project on your mobile directly as it is on desktop. It is the same engine that renders it 
same engine that reads the project. So it's not like transformation. It's really the same QG is running on your mobile with a bit, bit different user interface. So if you have some online online map in your project, you can use it as it is on your mobile. But then on the mobile, you need to be online so you can see the background map. Also, you can use some QGIS processing tools to generate the offline map from your online map. And then it can be used offline on your mobile because you don't need internet connection to fetch the data from some servers. So you can use it both ways. You can use some map teams to switch between online services and offline. It's up to you. So that makes perfect sense. So if I want to use the online stuff, I can either say, okay, I need to be working in an area where my mobile phones, mobile devices have are connected online. Then I can use the maps. And then the, the data that they're editing, for example, or creating, that could be offline. Or I could use some, some other tools in QGIS and perhaps cache that online map that I'm using in, in my QGIS desktop and then move that through the packaging environment over to my mobile devices. Is that correct? Yes, yes, it's perfectly correct, yes. Okay, so it, it sounded almost a bit simple. Like, So I have this project, I push a button and something happens. What is it that it happens? So it packages this, it makes a package out of whatever it is I'm using in my desktop environment and it pushes it to, to what? The package is really just a series of validations. So it makes sure, for example, that because it's synchronized, it works on file base. Usually your server layer is in geo package. That's, we pref- that's what we prefer and has the highest support for it. So there is the packaging or validation is just make sure that some of your layer is not completely somewhere else on your disk. So it's still in the same folder and also show you some basic validation problems like you have some settings on, but uh, it's not correctly um, set up. So it will not work on mobile and stuff like that. So when you click sync, it will just take the whole folder and push it to the server. The server can be either your server that you deploy on yourself because we are all open source. So you can like fetch the, the server Docker container from our GitHub and deploy it yourself. But if you don't want to maintain your server installation, which needs some knowledge about the Docker and all the server infrastructure and maintenance, then you can use our cloud. You can uh, buy some subscription that suits you or if you are a student, teacher or use it in academic or personal use like for your just your own personal projects then it's for free then it goes to the server and uh, you can also use web server to uh, see your data or see your versions there because every every version you create or every new version you create it's locked so you can see the difference and you see what what changed and who changed what wow so uh, let's uh, let's Say for a minute that we that we're using your cloud, and uh, do I need to log into that? Do I have to have created an account before I, I publish to the cloud, or does that happen you know, during the, the the first publishing stage? Yeah, you need to uh, create an account on the cloud um, to to be able to push. You just uh, make your some username and email and password, and it should go. And then then I can see that on the cloud, so I can see that this that this project that I've created on the cloud and I can see all the different versions of that as people start editing it and changing it. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's that's correct. You can also invite your colleagues to, to the same project, either as a writers or readers or administrators. Administrators can also invite others or change the permissions. Readers can just get the project and view the data and writers obviously can create new versions, either from QGIS or from mobile application. So it's kind of user management system, similar to what you know from uh, other cloud services. Wow, that sounds really cool. What makes a new version? Is that every time it gets an, an update from a user or is that at a specific time scale? Like so every day a new version is created or does it depend on how many changes are being made? Like, How do we define a new version? The technical background of the whole service is similar to the Git. So uh, every time you change, uh, let's say, easiest example is yet that you change you go to the field and uh, let's say add a few points or modify attributes of few of your points and then you press a sync button so it will make a difference between the original file and your modified file and this difference file is sent to the server where it's applied to your project so one version is a set of uh, set of changes in your layers or QGIS project that is sent in one batch. 
Well, so if I had hundreds or thousands of users, people modifying things in the field, I would have I'd have a, a version for every single user as they updated each day, for example. Yes, yes. When they update, you will see it as a new version. It also does automatic merging. So when you have, let's say, 10 users in a field and ev everyone is offline and at the end they come to the office and everyone synchronizes in the evening, it will automatically mm, come together and try to merge the data from 10 sources to the one. So you don't need to do this manually. Usually, most of the cases, you don't need to do it manually. So it's all automatic. And uh, you can also make some audit log. So you see who did the change, when, what what was the change. If you fetch it to the QGIS, then there you can see also visually, like which points were added or which points were modified, like geometry or some attributes. You can make a report from it and stuff like that. So it's pretty verbose, what, what you can do this with this versioning. It's, it's really... You can also think of it of uh, some versioning system if you don't want to use Postgres or PostGIS and you just want to version your QGIS project or geodata, geo packages, you can just use the margin maps simply to version your data and uh, not lose them and you don't need to set up some difficult database system for that. Is there a size limit to the projects that we're, or how big a project can be once it's in the cloud? Like projects with few gigabyte size or few thousands of versions, and it works nicely. On the limit, if you use a cloud, then uh, you need to have an additional. You need to have a storage available in your plan, subscription plan. But technically, it's it's we are trying to support uh, everything pretty much. Okay, so is, if I understand this correctly, I'm looking at pricing now on uh, virginmaps.com. Pricing and yeah, okay, so I can see that. You can just buy more storage, essentially. So it starts off with, I think the free plan is up to 100 megabytes of storage. Then you go up to a gigabyte, 10 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes of storage. But okay, so it's just a question. If you want more storage, you can just pay for more and, and get it. Yes, yes. Also, this storage is for the last version. It's not the whole history. So if you have written there 50 gigabyte, it means that that's the size of your like life, the latest version. So all history versions are not counting. And also, uh, we have a very much bunch of tools that you can use to reduce size of your storage. Like you, we have a recently developed tool that in QGIS you can set up that you don't need full resolution photos from your field survey. So you can set up, a, let's say, you want to reduce the size of the photos to one megabyte after they are taken on the mobile. So you are not sending ridiculously high resolution photos if you don't need them. So this is done automatically by the mobile application. Margin Maps input, or there are, let's say, some other integrations that we have developed. Like, for example, when you have photos on the cloud, you can run one Python Docker container that will get the photos from a cloud, move them to some third party storage, for example, Amazon S3 bucket, and it will also patch your QGIS project with a link to these moved files. So if you open the project in QGIS, you can still see the reference to the photos that are not now on the cloud. So, Wow, that, that sounds like a great idea. Can you tell me more about the, this uh, input app? So what environments does it run on and, and how do I get it? Mainly it's for Android and iOS devices, iPhones, iPads. It can run on any mobile or tablet. We are developing also Windows version and we also have uh, desktop versions, but uh, main usage is for pretty much any hardware you run. It doesn't have any strict hardware requirements. It should run on pretty much any mobile or tablet. It's also optimized for small mobiles. So you don't need to buy a tablet or something bigger to, to be able to use all features. And uh, main limitation is mostly the size of the project. So if you have some very big project, you need to make sure that you have enough storage on your phone to fetch it and use it. So if I, if I download this on my Android device, how do I link that to these projects that are being created in Mergent Maps? Like, how do I get access to that project? Do I also, as a user, as a, an editor, someone out in the field, do I need to have a login to, to Mergent Maps if we're using your cloud to be able to edit the project? It's the same, it's the same login as you use in a web or, or a plugin or a mobile application. So you create your username once and then you log in in a QGIS plugin or input app or web with the same username and password, and it also connects to your to your account. So, so you 
install the application, log into your username and password you have for plugin, and then you have you immediately see a list of your project on the cloud. You click download button, it will download your project, and you see the map, and you can do uh, whatever you want in the field, digitize some points, get some edit some data, push sync it back. Okay, so if like I'm, let's say I'm the I'm the map creator, I'm the project creator. And then I have 15 other people that I've never met, for example, working that are going to go and do some, some field work. Let's say they're all freelancers, just you know, so we have an example. Do I just send them my login then? Because I'm the one that created this login on your cloud. So I just send them my login details, and then they download the app, log in with my details, and they can see the projects that I've created. I would not advise this, simply because um, then you will not see who did the change, because it's the same login. And we don't have any restriction for number of users that you can share your project with. So the best way, if you ask them to create Merging Maps accounts, and, and then you can add them to your project as a writers or readers on the web. So and once they will log into their mobile phones with their account, they will see your project as a shared with them. Uh, okay, this makes so much more sense to me. So I, as the map author, I have a lot of control over who's, who does what and and, and what people can see. And then I guess that way I can also see you know, when they make edits, for example, I, that'll all be visible in the logs. Yes, yes. We have many examples uh, users using this way. For example, is it GIS, you are a GIS consultant and some nature reserve ask you to help with uh, collecting data from like, about trees or about some animals in your nature reserve. So you just create one project in QGIS, you are QGIS expert. And uh, you maintain the project and you do some reports, analysis, and uh, you have, let's say, 20, 40 volunteers that you just tell them to install the app and you share it with them and they go around the, the forest and get the data for you. So, and uh, like we have, for example, one case study from uh, Kent Wildwild Trust in UK where this is done and uh, for presence of innocent species, food, food plants or bisons and other an animals in, uh, in there, for example. This app input, is, is it basically like a um, simplified version of QGIS on my mobile device? Yes, it's right. And also we try to keep it very intuitive and very, very easy to, to use. We think about all new features that they shouldn't uh, bring more complexity to new users. We really like that the app is, uh, you can use it without any training, pretty much. In 15 minutes, you know how to use it. If you are familiar with very normal apps on, on your phone, uh, with maps uh, for car navigation and stuff like that. So that's the goal. So you can uh, give it to anyone, any volunteer, or we had a citizen project in the uh, Netherlands and people are installing the app and going uh, around and uh, filling some forms so for archaeological discoveries of uh, Celtic burial mounds as a heritage quest project. So really anyone, anyone and also almost without training or no training, you can just install the app and go. That's, that's what we want. So if you have some QGIS user that can set up a project and then get the data and make some reports and analysis afterwards, then the people outside, they, they don't need anything, don't, don't need training, they don't, know, don't need to know anything about GIS. I think that, that this sounds really cool. But I, I want to ask, so one of the things I notice with my mobile devices when I'm outside, it's not necessarily the most accurate in terms of if, if I wanted to go outside and do some digitizing, you know, the GPS or the, the location I get from my mobile device is not always that, that great. Will, will this app recognize an external GPS? Yes, yes. Uh, we support most of the used uh, external GPS too. So you can just plug it in and uh, in Android, you can just connect to it, uh, connect it to recognize that you have external GPS so you can connect to it and use it and it will use the external GPS precision. So yeah, you can use this uh, too if, if you have. Yeah, but uh, many applications, you don't need that. Uh, if you are outside and you have clear sky, then many applications you like this few meters precision it's it's fine for you in some applications you can connect external gps so it's supported i want to go back to this idea of cre of authoring that these these projects just for a second when i do that in q in qgis is that the place that i decide what layers 
and perhaps even what features within what layers are editable? Or is everything that I publish can be edited by the people using this? How do I sort of limit things? How do I simplify things for the user in terms of what they can edit and perhaps even what the values they can, they can add as attributes? Yes. In QGIS, you can use the form setup similarly as you, as you set up your QGIS project for desktop. And for each value, you can use various widgets. So for example, for integer values, use integer widgets. So on mobile phone, it will, it will appear as a slider or field where you can only input number or same for dates and date times. So on, on mobile phone, it will pop up the calendar. You can also set up a, a constraints in, a, in a QGIS or limits where you can say, okay, uh, this number must be positive or cannot be bigger than 100. Or also you can set up a various other widgets like choose from, from a list or from set values, checkbox, and all the common widgets you can imagine and all the common constraints. You can also use QGIS expression engine, do various derived fields. You can also use tabs so you can uh, make a form so... Uh, for example, only if some checkbox is checked, it will add some additional info you will be shown to the user. So he needs to fill some additional info. Yeah, there are like plenty of possibilities and many of those are supported on both QGIS and mobile app, Virgin Maps input. And uh, you can tweak with it and um, make something that will bring you very quality data back from a field survey in the format you want with some basic uh, quality uh, assurance already. So. And later on, uh, if you are still some companies do that with merging maps, you can uh, have a Python integration. We have some Python modules and also QGIS has Python integration. So you can afterwards make some uh, scripts in uh, QGIS on, on your server that further validates the data from a field. So it's all, all nice when you want to process it or make some reports from it. That sounds like there's a ton of possibilities here. What, what does the, the synchronization process look like? And I think that this might be one of the harder things to, to get right, making sure that people upload the data when they're finished. Like how, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. On your mobile application, you have a button to synchronize on your, on your canvas. So there is like, you just click the button and it will send the data to the cloud. Also, we implemented recently a feature for auto-syncing. So if you want, you can... Uh, start this auto-syncing on your Merging Maps input mobile application, which means that, that every time a modification is done to your project on a field, uh, it will automatically send that one edit directly. So it will not wait for a batch or manual clicking of the, of the to button, but it will do it automatically. Oh, that's, that's really smart. And then uh, in terms of my project, getting that back down, uh, so I'm back in my QGIS desktop now, in terms of getting that back down from the cloud, what, what, how do I do that? Again, then in the plugin, there is a button to sync. So you just click the button and it will fetch the all the latest version from the cloud. So, And then there are some uh, tools uh, in the QGIS where you can see like what you fetched and uh, analyze that further. Let's say this is an ongoing project and I want to make some changes to my original QGIS project, which I uploaded. Can I just do that as well and then sync again, overwrite that project that is on the cloud and then that will be updated as well automatically out to the, to the various uh, users? Yes, 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 you can do that. This, this sounds incredible. So I can see a ton of opportunities for this, especially for these kind of citizen science projects. But who, who is using this commercially? And, and do you have an idea of what they're doing with it? Yeah, we have plenty of users, plenty of users from various industries, for example, in electricity, utilities, fiber optic companies, Many GIS consultants, if they have a job for any field surveys for their clients, they want and they are using open source GIS in their work, they, they pick for our solution. And then agriculture, we have uh, clients that uh, have some farms, either individuals or, or bigger that they use it for soil samples or recording uh, the, let's say we have a case study from South Africa where farmer records uh, weight of the pecan that's uh, uh, for each tree and soil, soil composition for his farm. Then uh, it could be telecommunications industry doing some asset management or doing a progress of uh, some work outside. So um, 
for example, in uh, if, if we talk about uh, as an example about the fiber optics or internet provider company, first of all, they need to do some high-level design of their work. So to verify it's possible, they need to go around and make sure that land use is classified correctly in their maps and uh, it's possible to build it there so they can use Virgin Maps for that, uh, for their surveyors. Once they produce a detailed design, so they can again go outside with the same QGIS project they use for de- designing and see if the design is reasonable. So for example, you don't have a cabinet blocking your, your window, so you will not see anything anymore after it's built. So they can, they can check on the side with input and mark some problems. And once it's confirmed, then uh, during the implementation, they can again uh, go with this QGIS record, QGIS um, project on mobile input up to the field and see, or to the city, and see and record all deviations from the design. So when there's like built something differently than when it was planned, they can like note it and so they have the correct plans at the end. And then once it's built and, and working, they can do, again, use merging maps for asset management. So if something breaks, they can, again, uh, have a project in the mobile and send some, someone to, the, to there to fix it and stuff like that. So, yeah, we have many users from various industries. And because it's so flexible, it's so flexible as QGIS. So if you are using QGIS in your, in your company, then it's kind of straightforward to, to extend it to your field surveys with merging maps. What does the development pipeline look like on this? Like, so I would imagine that you're constantly fixing bugs and implementing new features. What, what can we expect to see in this project for, um, in the next year's time, two years' time? We want to make the smoothest experience for, for the field surveys. So in the long term, we have planned, for example, to integrate um, map overviews or web maps to the Merging Maps Cloud. So when you get a new version, you can instantly see a web map based on QG server. Again, the same graphics as you see on desktop and mobile. And you can share it with, with your client. So, so he, the client can see, let's say, progress of implementation of this fiber, fiber design like in real time. It's one feature that it's, it will not be in two years. It will be much sooner. It will be hopefully end of this year or early next year. This sounds amazing. Just so I understand this. So this will be like a, a link or something like that I can click on in, in Merging Maps in, in, in your cloud where I can follow that to a web map and I can see the progress each day. So if people were synchronizing their data each day, I could see that just sort of as they synchronize it being added, added to the map. And that's something I could share with you know, whatever client I was working with or interest group that, that was involved. Yes, yes. Also these bigger companies, they have, for example, big uh, TV screens in their offices where they see the, let's say, all the fibers or they have implemented or some monitoring system. And so you can then use it directly from a cloud. So you don't need to deploy your all web maps, let's say. That's one addition we would like to see. Then all those, there are, we have a Slack community chat where you can join as emergingmaps.com slash community slash join. And uh, we regularly talk with our, our users and uh, if users want some feature, for example, now we are discussing uh, with the community a new permission system. So you will be able, for example, to say you can, like some people can modify the project on a desktop and some people can modify the project only on mobile. So, or other permissions that, that are not implemented yet. But if the community wants it, we discuss with them how we implement it and we try to implement it. So th- there are a lot of features, smaller or bigger, that, uh, that uh, we are working on. And of course, there is uh, plenty of work where we optimize the cloud service so it's run smoothly and uh, uh, there, are, there is no... Uh, it's run fast and efficiently. So I got to say that this sounds amazing. And I think right at the start, you, you mentioned something about, I could just do this myself. So we've been talking about your cloud at the moment, but if I wanted to, and I was tech savvy enough, can I download Mergen Maps and run it on my own server? I could just do all this myself. Yes, yes, you can do it. There is a public GitHub repository with a Docker Compose file. So you can just do Docker, Docker Compose up and uh, it should should work for your personal project if, for example, to have it, as I said, uh, for company or production ready, then you need to know 
a bit of from the server and Docker, so it's secure and everything. But uh, there is a Docker Compose file you can run on yourself if you want to try it out. Um, in generally, we are very much in this open source GIS world, and we do a lot of open source stuff for QGs and crowd fundings and everything. So we really love this open source mentality and like no vendor locking and community and everything that comes with it. So we will always have this uh, community edition in a way that uh, you will be not vendor locked. You can, you can use it on your own and set it up. We also offer uh, enterprise edition where there are some more advanced enterprise features that usually you don't need if, it's, if, you, if you have a smaller company or you use it for your own. And uh, also it comes with um, help with deployment and help with uh, maintenance of the server. So, but as I said, you can use the community edition. Everything is open. You can join the Slack chat and ask us if there is some problem. This never ceases to amaze me with the open source community, like the, the generosity there. I think the temptation for a lot of companies would be say like, this is our IP, we made this, and you, you have to pay to get access to it. I'm, I'm kind of blown away by this. That enterprise version that you're talking about, just so I understand this, this is something that, like a, a paid version of it that I can install on my own machine, and you, you would help me with that. So if I run into problems, you would like log on to, to my environment, my server, and, and fix things and update things. Yes, this enterprise version is meant for uh, for bigger companies that uh, they uh, need to have the data on their servers for some maybe legal reasons or security reasons or uh, internal rules. And to facilitate that, it's basically giving them our knowledge running this cloud service for years and trying to make their deployment as uh, as efficient as possible and help us help them with uh, deployment or updates and and uh, our knowledge so they feel that uh, if they had to go this way it's it's all all fine and everything will work smoothly this sounds amazing like it, honestly it sounds un- unbelievable i can just see the huge benefit this would be for a whole bunch of citizen science projects for a whole bunch of of businesses i'm already thinking shit i wonder if there's like some ground truthing business i could set up with some of the the satellite companies or, or something like that you know where you could say to people, oh, you need this data ground truth. You could make a project and do it all remotely and then just sort of publish it out to the web. Like, you know, who wants to do this kind of thing? Almost like in the, in the gig economy. <laughs> I don't know if it's realistic or not, but I could see a bunch of opportunities here. So thank you very much for making this, you know, offering that sort of community version to people. And I, I guess just generally making, a, you know, helping improve the uh, awareness around open source geospatial and QGIS. I think, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me and uh, we will be in Phos4G at the end of the summer. So if anyone is there, feel free to stop by. We will have a stand in the main hall and uh, I would love to talk with you and uh, share our knowledge about uh, UGs and merging maps and know what what you are doing too. Just before I let you go, Peter, where can people go? I've said the name a couple of times, mergingmaps.com. Is there anywhere else where people should should go if they want if they want to check out this project or, or learn more about what the the things that that you're working on? Yeah, definitely the 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 Merging Maps com website is very nice to start with, and also joining uh, Merging Maps slash community slash join the Slack channel where all developers and all our team and more than four hundred users are already there, so you can chat with them about how should I do this or. I have some problem and someone will help you there. And if you are more interesting about uh, QGIS development and plugin and open source migration to open source or support training, then you can visit our company webpage, uh, uh, Lutra Consulting company webpage and see, for example, our blog. We are doing this crowdfunding uh, for point clouds with Hubu and Node Road, and it's also exciting uh, to, to see the community involvement in the crowdfunding for QGIS development. So that's like the main pages you can consider visiting. Thank you very much. I'll get those links off you, especially to the Slack channel, and I will put them in the show notes of, of this episode. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you for building this. It's amazing. I can't wait to see what people do with it. Cheers. So I really hope you enjoyed that episode all about Mergent Maps taking QGIS offline. There'll be links to where you can connect with with Peter from 
Blue Tire Consulting in the show notes of this episode. Also, uh, I'll put in some links to documentation around this. Keep in mind there's a free plan, so if you're doing citizen science projects or if working for a, a non-profit or perhaps in an educational environment and you want to give students first-hand experience of collecting data and processing it and using it to do analysis, this might be a really great option for you. And that's it for another episode of the Mapscaping Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. I really appreciate it. As always, I would love to hear from you and you're more than welcome to reach out on social media or through our website, mapscaping.com. There'll be lots of details there. Or for those of you that are into email, just email me at info at mapscaping.com. Honestly, I, I would love to hear from you. Okay, that's it for me. We'll talk again next week. Bye.